All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we're going to be having some fun with a beautiful Swiss lady. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, one more mag. Beautiful. All right, let's take out some poppers here. Not bad. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you right now, Man, there ain't nothing better than Swiss Luger, guys. Um, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be talking here about a couple of nice Swiss Lugers. I'm only going to be shooting one of them, uh, but we brought them out to show you guys just an awesome piece of Swiss military history uh, and a part of small arms development as well. Um, there's some facts about the Luger pistols that a lot of people may not know, and I'm going to try to kind of uh, talk about this in a way that maybe makes sense to me and you, but... Uh, everybody associates the Luger pistol with Germany, okay? Uh, the Germans adopted the pistol in 1908, so that's why it's called the P-08. But the Luger pistol's been around a lot longer than 1908. Uh, they developed the Luger pistol in the late turn of the century. Uh, it was basically an improved version of the Brochard pistol, which I wish I had one to show you, but they're really crazy space-age looking guns. I mean, they almost look like something out of Buck Rogers or Star Wars or something crazy like that. But the Brochard system was also a toggle style of system. So we have an axis here of rotation. We have an axis of rotation on the back side of the bolt mechanism. When the bolt is cycled, it toggles up into the rear, pulls the bolt back, and that's what exposes the breech. Uh, these guns were finely fitted, extremely well made, and the Swiss military adopted the Luger pistol in 1900. So almost 10 years before the adoption of the Luger by the German Wehrmacht, uh, you know, the, the Swiss have been using this for that amount of time. Uh, the Swiss Lugers are definitely a little bit different than what you're going to see out there that, in terms of the German contract Lugers. Um, you know, this has a grip safety on the back of the firearm, and uh, so that's pretty, uh, you know, a stark difference there. Um, these guns are also in 30 Luger. So is a 30 caliber bullet. Basically, if you look at the... Uh, at the rounds here. This is not a nine millimeter. Nine millimeter was something that came around uh, with the P08 and some of the later Lugers, but nine millimeter wasn't the start of where the Luger came about. The 30 Luger was a 30 caliber cartridge. Uh, so basically imagine a nine millimeter type case, but neck down to a 30 caliber. And they were still kind of in that same thinking around the turn of the century where they had the broom handle pistol and the broom handle pistol fired a neck down cartridge called 30 Mauser. So they still had it in their mind like 30 caliber was the appropriate diameter for pistol bullets. And it wasn't until later that the nine millimeter um, kind of came around. So, you know, definitely a cool gun, tons of, of neat history. So you could really call this model technically a 1906-29, okay? Some of these guns were made really early on and then refurbished in 29. Some of them were made like back during World War II and back in the 20s and 30s. Um, so a gun like this definitely would have been in the holster of a policeman, soldier, um, even a civilian, dare I say. So uh, Switzerland had, you know, at the time, and, and I believe still does, has some pretty open gun laws in terms of civilian firearms ownership. So a citizen in Switzerland back then that wanted to buy a firearm could buy a firearm. They could buy a K31. They could buy a pistol. They could buy whatever they wanted. So on this particular um, pistol that I'm holding here, uh, it is P marked. Um, and what P generally means, now I could be wrong on this particular example, but when you see a P mark on a Swiss firearm, it usually means private sale. So that means that that gun was sold to a citizen and not to you know military or a soldier or whatever. Or sometimes what happens if, if a soldier got out of the service and decided to keep his sidearm or keep his, his, his you know, rifle, he could buy that gun and then at which time it might then be stamped P for private sale out of service. So if the gun's in like pristine shape, like both these Lugers are in, in exceptional shape and they were either refurbished or 
they're in such good shape that maybe they just escape you know, any type of duress of, of use or field use because they're a private sale. Uh, one thing about the Swiss Lugers I love is the beautiful Swiss crest on top of the toggle. Uh, it does have a safety in the same location you would expect on a Luger. The grip safety adds an additional layer of safety in the gun. Um, magazines for these guns are extremely expensive and extremely difficult to come by. Um, original things such as holsters, accessories, almost impossible to locate. Um, these are definitely in the super collectible realm. And, uh, you know, my, my wife is a big fan of the Luger. She, she loves it. Uh, Brandy does. And uh, we were up there at Classic uh, getting a few things from Rick. And I, I happened to uh, see these over in the corner and I inquired about them. And it turns out they were for sale. And I was able to uh, procure both of these Lugers uh, from Rick up there at Classic. Uh, was nice enough to sell them to me. Because these things are very, very difficult to get. And uh, this is just an example of a wonderful piece of European craftsmanship. Beautiful Swiss craftsmanship, which you just can't go wrong with. Uh, I'll never turn down an opportunity to shoot uh, Swiss firearms. All right, we see here we got some beautiful holsters. Well worn, uh, but well used, well cared for. Uh, Swiss marked. So just the holsters alone have definitely a very interesting profile to them. Just beautiful. Uh, you can't mistaken a Swiss Luger holster or a Luger holster in general. Uh, the German Luger holsters have more of a kind of rounded, bulb-like appearance to them, uh, whereby the Swiss Luger holsters, because the barrels are skinnier, they're not 9mm, being 30 Luger, because the barrels are so skinny, you can see definitely uh, a really easy sign, for one, is to see if it's Swiss marked, but then two, uh, you'd usually see that kind of skinny barrel profile on the holster itself, and that, that is immediately lets you know that that is a uh, Swiss Luger holster. All right. Let's shoot the gun a little more. I'm not gonna shoot Brandy's pistol because I'm, I'm really trying not to put a ton of wear and tear on these things. And uh, she doesn't even know I have it, so she probably would see this later and be mad that I took her gun out. So we're just gonna shoot mine. But she does have the, you know, Black Widow. Ooh, she wanted the one with the black grip, so. Uh, Brandy does a lot of great work for the channel. She does a lot of stuff behind the scenes and handles things for us, so. Um, you know, she deserves to have something nice every now and then. And when I saw that, I knew she wanted one. And that's why I bought it for her, because uh, she deserves it. All right. Now, we're going to shoot the gun a little more. All right. Wow. So accurate. So accurate. Now watch me miss. <laughs> okay. Guys, I'm here to tell you right now, this is probably one of the best handguns I've ever shot in terms of accuracy and, man, just how well she points. I mean, look at those groups. I mean, I'm not even that particularly that good of a pistol marksman, but I'm going to tell you right now, around the turn of the century, if you were a soldier and you were armed with this gun, you had one accurate piece. A side note on the history of the Luger, too, and I'll mention it. I'm going to shoot one more mag, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more. Man, what a just gorgeous gun. You've got a loaded chamber indicator, so when the, uh, the toggle is in battery, it lets you know that there's a round in the chamber. Very, very cool. Tell you what, let's take out a few sodas. Nice, all right, our gopher. Tell you what, headshot on the gopher, right over the top of his head. That's all right. One interesting footnote in the history of the uh, Luger, I'm just going to load mag as I talk here, is the fact that you look at the Walther P38 service pistol, and Lugers, as you can see here, are wonderful, wonderful quality. But the issue with Lugers when it came to wartime duress and production was that they were just too complicated to make. So, you know, when the P-38 was adopted by the Vermont, it was adopted in order to ease production constraints of the Luger. The Luger was a more complicated pistol. It required more skill to fit the components. 
Uh, it required more expense and time to make. So they needed a mass-produced pistol that they could offer their soldiers um, that they could put out for a lower cost and to increase the quantity of pistols that they were out there in military service use. You know, the Luger is a fine weapon. It was also a very price collectible in terms of being captured in warfare. A lot of GIs over in, in World War II coveted the Luger for its accuracy. And here I am uh, not paying attention. I'm not loading the mag right. They coveted the Luger for its accuracy and for its status symbol because a soldier that was issued a Luger back then was usually a, uh, you know, some type of an officer or, I don't know, I, I think they issued most of the P-38s to NCOs and things like that. But generally, if you were issued a Luger, you were somebody important. So the Luger became a status symbol in the war. If a soldier captured a Luger, that was his way of saying, look, I took down a, a, an officer or I, you know, I, it was just a status symbol type of thing. And, uh, and very much so. They're finely fitted pistols. They're wonderfully accurate. They're super well made, especially the Swiss Lugers. And, you know, I've shot Swiss Lugers. I've shot German Lugers. And uh, I've even shot, shot some of the, you know, other, like, oddball Lugers. Like, I've, I've handled a few out there from, you know, various uh, places. And I'll tell you what, the Swiss Lugers are definitely the king of the hill when it comes to high quality. And, man, just look at that accuracy. So, all right, a couple more mags. I think you guys get the idea. It's just a wonderful system. I mean, that Luger, when, on the final round, when the follower pushes up, it locks that toggle to the rear. So that's a very distinct feature. Every time the firearm fires, that toggle is going up into the rear like that, which is really, really cool. Just such a distinctive shape of gun. Um, in a way, almost like frighten, frighteningly modern in a way. It, it's so vintage and so cool that it's almost and it's so retro that it almost is modern again because there's just such the detail and and just craftsmanship that goes into making these firearms and what went into making them you just don't see in today's world and that's why they're such a collectible piece for that reason because this is just craftsmanship and quality that you don't get in modern guns anymore sadly so anyway but that's why we can own them, you know, so we give them a home and we give them a, a place to be respected and cared for. And, and to me, that's, that's why I have a lot of these old guns is because they're just so dang cool. And they just go back to a time in history where, you know, men and women were armed with the best firearms. You know, that the government wanted to give them the best tools of the trade that they possibly could. And man, just what an accurate pistol. All right, a couple more shots and then we're gonna move on here. All right, we got a stoppage. It's okay, she's old, guys. I mean, I don't care who you are or how good of a pistol shot you are. You cannot say anything more cool than get behind a hundred plus year old gun and shooting groups like that. Name one gun that's over a hundred years old that's a handgun that shoots like that. Just name one, you, you can't. I mean, there, there is no better shooting pistol than a Luger, man. Wow, what a shooter. All right, one more group, and then uh, I think you guys get the point. These things are killer. Heck yeah. All right. Chad, do you want to shoot this thing? All right, I'm going to turn it over to Chad and let him uh, take a few rounds through the Swiss Luger here. But uh, guys, I hope you understand how much we respect and revere historical firearms. They're very, very important because there's so many things in the design aspects of guns that you can just see in the engineering of these firearms. And the, the men and women that work to produce these guns are no longer here. They're gone. And the only way to keep their legacy and keep their intelligence and their, their attention to detail, to keep all of that alive, is to, is to honor these guns and shoot them and use them. That's the best way to make sure those craftsmen are honored and respected. 
because it took a lot of skill to design this gun and make this gun at the quality that they did. I mean, it took some real craftsmanship, some real dedication to make these guns. And that's something I think that a lot of people fail to recognize. I mean, it, it's cool to get out there and shoot black rifles and shoot, you know, uh, modern guns. I love modern guns just as much as the next guy. But you have to appreciate the classics. And guys, what a shooter. Man, that's just so cool. So I'm going to turn it over to Chad. He's going to want to shoot this thing. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I was just going to let Eric just do this video by himself because he didn't want to put a lot of wear and tear on these things. But since he asked, I'll shoot his gun. Cannot believe how good these things. Actually, you know what? I can believe how good these things shoot because they are Swiss. You know, we are Swiss military fanatics. All right. So let me see where I'm at here at about 15 yards here. Grabbing a quick photo. <laughs> All right, so it's hitting like three inches high for me. Yeah, a few inches high. Let's see. Been feeling just a little bit under the weather, guys, so forgive me if I'm a little sluggish here. <clears throat> Maybe one of those days where Eric outshoots me. Ooh. Ooh. Did you get that on the? Did you get that on camera? <laughs> That's gonna turn into a meme, dude. What is going on here? <laughs> you make it look easy, dude. I've just I have been having an off day today for sure. Now I do have um basically inherited it from my late grandfather, but I do have a, a, a PO8. It was a 1929, what a DWM, I think, uh, police issue gun. It wasn't a wartime gun or anything. It was a much earlier gun, but very, very nice condition. Thank you. Just need a few more rounds there. And it is in nine millimeter. The reason you haven't seen a video on it is because it has a few little quirky things going on with it that I need to let Ray look at. I've just kind of been procrastinating getting it up there to him, letting him have a peek at it. But let me try, let me try shooting just a few more rounds up close here. I don't know what it is with me today, man. It's just one of them off days. Okay, uh, a little failure to feed there. There we go. That's a little more like it. All right. What a shooter, man. I've always really enjoyed just the way these guns feel in the hand. That really steep grip angle there. Or, well, I guess shallow. This would be a shallow grip angle. It just fits in the hand real well. And just the toggle action, the weight of the gun. I mean, this thing does not move under recoil. I mean, it's just so smooth. All right. I'm going to take a few longer range shots here. Let's take out our popper. Good shot. Our six inch popper back there. 35 yards. Let's see. All right, so it's hitting high for me back there. Considerably high. All right, 40 yards. Yeah, Not it's hitting like, hitting like eight inches high or so. Let me take, uh, take a shot at 75. <laughs> well, it's, it's dead on the money at 75. <laughs> I got a little bit here. Oh, there's five rounds. Just give me those five rounds right there. Plenty. Take five shots at 75, and then we'll put this thing away. Man, what an awesome pistol, man. Man. Cannot go wrong with the Luger. I'm a little jelly of these things, especially what they're fetching nowadays. You don't want to know. 
Oh my gosh, all right, 75 yards. <laughs> And we've got Bessie back there on the range. <laughs> oh well, this thing's accurate enough, I'm not gonna hit that cow. Guys, what an awesome, awesome piece of Swiss military. I mean, it's gorgeous. I mean, there's, there's nothing else to say. I mean, just a gorgeous gun. I mean, just beautifully crafted, beautifully finished. Such a high quality piece, not even funny. Like I said, insanely jelly of both of these beautiful guns if you ever come across something like this and it's the right price you you'd be a fool not to snatch it up if you're a military surplus collector for sure but um eric did a much better job than me today like i said i'm a little bit under the weather just not quite feeling it we have uh, yeah we have those days every now and again at the range just can't quite get behind the guns that we're trying to demo for you guys but that's why we do a lot of the two shooter thing you know so sometimes i have off days sometimes eric has off days but anyways guys hope you enjoyed the video today and uh like i said eric did a much better job showing this thing off than i did but uh stay tuned we got a lot more military surplus on the way so stay tuned and uh, take care